I've mentioned this like a little bit. I like in elementary school, like I didn't have a lot of friends, and this isn't like a pity party. It's just like the fact. No, like no, sure. in school, I didn't have. You have so many friends now. <laughs> <laughs> More lunch break. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello, welcome back, guys. And we have our plus one, Rondi, who requested Vietnamese food. I got a banh mi. Yeah, thanks, Rondi. Thanks, Rondi. Yeah. Thanks for eating lunch with us. Yeah. As you guys know, it is the month of May, a very significant month for our community because it's Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. But it's also Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everyone, how are you really doing? You know, um, I'm doing all right. Oh, thanks, thanks for asking. <laughs> I yeah. think that's that's the first step, yeah. just like asking how, how you know, your peers and people that you care about are doing. Especially yeah. in the wake of like 2020 in this certain time, I think it's important for us to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's not talked about enough in general. Yeah, it was a very turbulent year for I'm sure a lot of you guys and for us too. And um, so it, it was important for us to come together for lunch break and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm definitely doing better th than most. I mean, there were definitely some ebbs and flows, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I think like right now I'm doing, I think I'm doing fairly well. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. We're still in the thick of it and there's a lot of, it could always be better. It could yeah. always mm -hmm. be better. Mm -hmm. How are you? Oh, um, I'm doing okay. Oh. Doing okay? When you say it soft like that, I'm sure there's, there's a lot to unpack <laughs> there. Well, it's doing better. I think it's also important to talk about because there's clearly still a stigma mm -hmm. um, when it comes to talking about mental health yeah. mm -hmm. in our community. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's also a lot of confusion in terms of like what it is and how, how it pertains to everyone, you know? I guess when you add the word mental, not so much the health part, but when you add the, like the word mental, mm -hmm. people think, oh, it's something psychological. I think there, there's, a, there's a perception uh, that's kind of created by the media yeah. where at least like in you know f entertainment where we have a fascination towards things that might not be uh, pleasant or, or whatnot and then that kind of paints this like n like negative imagery on like what mental health is yeah. it puts a lot of shame or like disapproval on the subject or mm -hmm. anyone that might yeah. be dealing with it and, and used in comedy mm -hmm. and as um, an excuse to yeah but as a um, joke. i didn't know too much about it or, or, or not. So actually, like, before this episode, before this taping, like, I, I spent, like, an hour, an hour or so, like, reading up on it, trying to, like, be more educated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot I didn't know. Because, like, I, I would also admit that, you know, my journey into even understanding what mental health is was delayed. And, like, it's not necessarily a fault of our own. It's also, mm -hmm. it's a, the stigma that's been yeah. deeply rooted in our, our society for a long time. So... Maybe we could start with that. Just like what what was our first experience even hearing about mm -hmm. mental health and beginning our understanding of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like when I went to Asia, like if I would like there was one time I specifically remember. I remember my relatives would be like, oh, like, you know, just get away from them because they're mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, why? Like, I didn't understand. But then I always had that connotation where like, oh, you should stay away from those kind of people, mm -hmm. even though there's nothing wrong. Like they're not doing anything wrong. So I remember like having, it's like a negative connotation, to, you know, to have like mental health mm. illness, struggling with your mental health or anything. Kind of like what you brought up, like mental illness and mental health, mm -hmm. that there's somewhat, I think that those are usually like the bigger, like umbrellas, like uh, mental health and well-being and mental illness, how like they can affect each other. Who say like, if you are like on the spectrum, you can still have a very positive outlook. You can still be a happy person. You can still be, uh, you know, close with friends and maintaining those relationships. And I think initially I thought that, that it was like one or the other. Uh, I guess so many things that I'm learning that it is a spectrum and there's this kind of like... Yeah, yeah. And everyone, everyone deals with mental health or yeah. can be affected with or needs to work on their mental mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, yeah, for me, me, for me too, in high school, when it came to talking about mental health, I thought it was specifically mental disorder or mm -hmm. people that have been diagnosed or um, are being, you know, treated and, and getting seek and getting like medical advice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think it wasn't until college is when I realized how much it, it's more, how bigger it is than that and how you have to think about it more as physical health, mm -hmm. you know, as the equivalent, like 
everyone has to, you know, Exercise. worry about their extra, yeah, eat, eat right, treat your body well, be healthy. When it comes Sleep. to your physical health yeah. and, and mental health is just, is, is very much the, in the same. So in college, it was once I saw all these stories about suicide, you know, like, like Ivy League universities and colleges across the country and hearing the reasonings and, and stuff that led them to that stuff. It was people like you and me that were just faced with a lot of pressure, their family or from their social networks and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that kind of drove them to very dark ends. And it's like for physical health, it's like, oh, I, I like physically see something wrong. Like something is happening with my body. Mm -hmm. Whereas mental health, like you can't really you can't, identify yeah. certain things. You'll like feel a feeling, but you'll be like, oh, like you brush it off very yeah. fast because you are n never able to identify that feeling of like. I think part of the stigma comes from feeling like your problems aren't as big as other people's mm -hmm. problems. Just because someone is having a more severe time or dealing with chronic illness mm -hmm. or um, doesn't mean that your mental health isn't important as well, even if it is less. And so like, maybe that's, that's the hard part of like navigating this journey is like, it's first like acknowledging that you, you can ask for help and mm -hmm. that you do have issues you need to cope with and um, it doesn't um, invalidate anyone else's or yours. Uh, like there's a spectrum and then you might compare yourself to how other people are dealing with something and you're like, oh, yours is probably not that bad. Mm -hmm. But like, what is that gauge? One is like asking for help or knowing when to start those conversations. But then I think another thing is like, you know, what is your lifestyle like? Um, are you taking those like walks to like clear your head? Are you um, changing up your scenery? You know, things like even like decluttering can actually, it sounds kind of silly, but decluttering can also change your, your mental outlook on, mm. oh, can I tackle on the day and, and stuff like that. So like what yeah. is your personal like experience? Journey, yeah. So I think, um, I don't know if many of you are aware, but um, I lost my father uh, a few years ago and I had a very like strong and close relationship. There's the grieving process and you're never prepared. You know, uh, you see movies and people, or, or like in psychology, you know, like there's the, I guess the chart that tells you like what are like the different stages. Uh, but like when you're in the, you know, in the thick of it, you don't really know how to process any of those things. Cause like I, I went through very, a pretty dark place. I was a uh, very negative. I also like didn't eat. Mm -hmm. um, I also like shut myself out from other people. I didn't want to talk to people. And I mean, this is kind of a good example where mental health does affect your physical health, where I kind of realized that there are certain things I needed to kind of change was like, like for instance, my girlfriend told me, oh, I need to be going on walks. There, there are like things that, that are already happening around that you have no control over. Like I was definitely becoming more and more anxious. I don't know if it's full blown anxiety, but I definitely felt like someone who probably had anxiety issues. I think in those period of time, you want to have more control because like something has been taken out of your control, mm -hmm. right? Things that shouldn't have happened, happened. And then you kind of are trying to find ways to re-steer the, steer the boat. Yeah, be able to cope through that. You know, I, and you mentioned your girlfriend that um, was there and kind of gave you some, some ideas on how to, to, to power mm -hmm. through that stuff. But was that, a, was that a journey to even open up to your girlfriend? And sure that's I didn't naturally open up it was more of I didn't think it was like a, a big enough issue until I realized oh these are things that I sh uh, I'm missing out on you know things that can make me happier you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in a sad place mm -hmm. and then there's a part of me that's like oh just let me be you know I, yeah. I, I don't I don't see anything wrong with it right mm -hmm. they say like oh you can if you're feeling sad just feel sad but I think that I think that comes off as like it's a kind of like a one dimensional in how to respond to the situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was just, I wasn't taking care of me, myself. Uh, I try to put a lot of that burden on myself. Like, you know, everything, every, all of the stuff you can't see. So everything is mental. Mm -hmm. um, I think it wasn't like uh, until I started to change some of my, I guess, lifestyle and yeah. try to go back to what I, Mm. had I think that I started to see a little bit more of a light at the end of the tunnel for sure mm -hmm. even just like how you're describing it, it feels, is, is feels very familiar in different respects but mm -hmm. like immediately just trying to coping by kind of closing up mm -hmm. you know and like kind of not 
um, embracing your emotions and stuff like that and kind of kind of pushing that away. But yeah, that process that you went through to kind of kind of get you back into the rhythm of things and, and starting like acknowledging that you are sad and, and mm -hmm. interacting and, and choosing to be happy yeah. again is is the journey that a lot of us, I think, are looking yeah. for. I think for me, it was like I was dealing with two two things. One was being very, very depressed. And mm -hmm. then um, and then the other one was like things not being put on my plate uh, that I had to somehow take care of or deal with. Um, and then that created a certain form of anxiety because you wanted things to work out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you not only did you want to work out, but you want to work out smoothly, you want it to work out quickly, mm -hmm. you know, so you can get out of that space. Right. And um, I didn't have any of that. I mean, now in hindsight, I think my response was natural. Yeah. But I think like as a person who's gone through it, if people were to be in those situations, I think I would somehow try to shed some of my insight in in saying like, you know, first of all, don't control everything, mm -hmm. you know, just be okay with the fact that you don't know the outcome mm -hmm. and that at the end of the day, things will get better. I think that, I think that's the, that North yeah. Star mm -hmm. that was like, oh, everything will eventually get better. This is going to be a certain period in time where things are not working out, things suck. And it's definitely like a lot harder to do. It's like easier said than done. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like, oh yeah. We're not saying it's easy. Yeah. Like, to, to take that like that mental like part of, of you where you're thinking like I don't need control that's really hard to be like yeah I don't need control like to let that go it's it's incredibly hard especially mm -hmm. if you're battling with anxiety so mm -hmm. we're saying it not like oh you should just do this oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there isn't like one way you mm -hmm. know yeah. I think everyone's different at different circumstances and that's something to stress too this isn't something that is also you do these steps and you you're mm -hmm. fixed yeah. it's a process and i'm sure like to this day you're still working on it mm -hmm. yeah right yeah everyone's personal journey is different let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor squarespace we like their video blocks feature because it allows us to drag and drop any videos we want to share to anyone who steps by to learn more visit squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready, use our promo code WONGFU for 10% off your first purchase on your website or domain. Can't wait to see what you make. Now let's get back to lunch break. I've had multiple personal mm -hmm. experiences. I think in my whole life, I've gone to therapy like four times. So like, I've mentioned this like a little bit. I like in elementary school, like I didn't have a lot of friends. And this isn't like a pity party. It's just like the fact. No, like not sure. in school, I didn't have friends. You have friends. so many friends now. <laughs> Then <laughs> I remember there was a point in like fifth grade, mm -hmm. like I was going to junior high and I thought, man, if if I'm not going to have friends in junior high too, I might as well like not live. Like this isn't fun. Yeah. But in junior high, luckily I, I made friends. But I think over the time, because I didn't have friends, me like putting friends in a pedestal was like, I did that a lot. Like I put a lot of high regard to my friends. If friends didn't want to be my friends, I would take it very, very personally. So I think that because I didn't have a lot of friends, I like allowed people to basically like step over me a mm -hmm. lot in high school. Mm -hmm. And then well, around senior year, I had this root of like insecurity that told me people didn't like me. Like my friends don't like and me. And you no one, blamed yourself. No one likes me. Yes, yeah. And I blamed myself. I went to the point where I was finding evidence of people not liking me. Uh, we had like a blackout, like the power went out in school. So like we got out of school like early. And we were gonna hang out, gonna drop off a friend. So I was like, oh, text me if y'all are mm -hmm. hanging out. And then no one texted me. And then I found out the friend I dropped off was like, oh, are you going to like Joy Yee's, which was a restaurant in our area? Uh. And I was like, wait, why is people are people hanging out? And they're like, he was like, yeah. And I was like, I didn't get invited. So that was like the final thing where I was mm. like, oh, for sure, my friends don't like me. Mm. And my life is over <laughs> like uh, and i was on tumblr back then yeah tumblr in the past was very like they romanticized self-harm a lot a lot of like suicide ideation and then i basically like i self-harmed and i'm saying this not like it's casual like i'm yeah. saying it because i'm very nervous yeah, yeah but i cut myself and not very it wasn't a lot like it was with like it wasn't to the point where i needed like hospitalization or anything yeah. but basically in the end like some friends found out. One of my friends told my mom, so my mom found out. Yeah. So then she sat me down. She was like, Michelle, have you thought about killing yourself? And I was like, no, I didn't. And it was one of those things where I was like, 
I realize the actions of what I've done mm. could affect other people. Mm. And so, say for myself, I didn't think about like, like mm -hmm. ending my life, but my mom doesn't know that. So she forced me to go to therapy, and me as like a disgruntled teenager was like, I don't want to go to therapy, that means something's wrong with me. Right, right, right. I went to therapy, re like it did a lot of good work for me. Like in the first like couple sessions, I was like, I don't want to talk. Yeah. yeah. But it ended up, like I went for like a course of like six or seven months, mm. and it did do a lot, because I think your perception in high school is like everything and everyone is great. But then as you grow up, you realize a lot of people like personalities don't match. People take advantage of you sometimes. People are toxic sometimes. I think you could say you were depressed. Yeah, yeah. I think I could say I was depressed. And people always think like you have to say you're depressed because like, like you think about like killing yourself or like hurting yourself. But depression has again, it's like a lot of spectrums. Like yeah. just because I hurt myself doesn't mean I'm like the picture of someone who's depressed. Mm -hmm. Someone can be depressed without hurting themselves. Right. Yeah. Saying it right now, self harm is not the way to go. Yeah. Do not do it. Um, because I heard a lot of friends and a lot of family who worried about me and I should have gone to people who cared about me yeah. to tell them my feelings. I should have told like my mom. That was like my first like major thing. And then over time, because I had gone to therapy and it did well for me, I've been like more okay with going to therapy. I realized like a lot of other friends are struggling with mental health and it's a really hard thing to talk about because you don't want people to view you differently because after like I hurt myself in high school people walked on eggshells with me yeah. and I knew that they weren't really the friends that I could depend on mm -hmm. if they're gonna act like that. So. Yeah and I think like one part of your story that also resonated with me is that how, how important it, it was to have like allies like your mom. Mm -hmm. Maybe she could have recognized it sooner or um, the fact that she took you to therapy you know mm -hmm. and, and suggested it at an earlier age, but also recognized once she saw the problem yeah. that she didn't dismiss it mm -hmm. and offered that as a solution and uh, um, was like so important for mm -hmm. your recovery. Mm -hmm. It it's also stresses the point of like why it has to be normalized in the family. Yes, I think for me it would it would be more in the anxiety mm -hmm. um, and having anxiety in college. And I think it's so for me maybe like I wouldn't quick be quick to label it as mental health when I was in college because of the reasons we talked about of, oh, there's there's people out there that are dealing with worse things, mm -hmm. grieving, mourning, or chronic depression or something. I think this one might be a very common one that a lot of people are dealing with right now, especially in college. I was like a senior president of an org, not knowing what was next. And I think my, there was a lot of work. My grades weren't doing that well. So a lot of uncertainty in the future and running a group of people caused a lot of stress and I fell into the same categories of like closing people out and not um, talking to people about the stress I had, even like from like my e-board or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took like friends on the e-board to like reach out and like see that they acknowledged it and like offering solutions mm -hmm. for me to like acknowledge it. But it's, it's, yeah. I don't talk about feelings that much. So, anxiety, it's, it's, it's one that you're always working on. There's mm -hmm. like, it'll be school, it'll be work, it'll be family. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, having the support system is what gets you through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, what has helped like probably all of us is just having a good support system. You, your friends, you, your girlfriend, and also probably your family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is like, people don't teach you how to be a friend of someone who has, is struggling with mental health. When I was in college, I found out someone that I was really close with, they had depression and anxiety and they had a panic attack in front of me. And I was like, I don't know what to do. But the thing to do is like, just don't judge them and just try to be there for them. I think people need to learn more or like, there needs to be more sources out there to be like, what to do when your friends are having like a panic attack or they're depressed. A lot that has been coming up more recently. There is toxic positivity, which is like just be happy is toxic positivity. And the reason why that's so bad is because you're just telling them like they should not be who they are or what they're feeling right now. So I think recently it's been more and more of a thing, like anxiety in general, I think mental health wise has become more prominent mm -hmm. in the past. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I was younger, like I just thought anxious was like a nervous feeling, not like anxiety is like a mental health. Or I think people are finally able to admit mm -hmm. that they have like um, a certain level and, and it's something that they need help 
coping with. Mm -hmm. Be and it's probably because people are talking about it more. It's more prevalent than you think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of modern day factors that maybe also maybe mm -hmm. have increased it over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't lie. Especially like among like millennials where, uh, or Gen Zers where we feel like we need that immediate re Friend, response. Yeah. And then how everybody's so public facing, you know, people share their status or could be real or fake, mm -hmm. but they're sharing their status so much. And then you feel like you need to be at that current stage in your life. And then you now create a problem for yourself that you can't really control. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you become more and more anxious as a result, I mean that's a that's a very like yeah uh, like very like layman's term, but like anxiety is is, is a much more significant yeah. Yeah. thing than that. And like so, social media does have a lot to do with it too. Like you said, like people can see how other people are progressing in their life, and they see that they're not doing anything, and so it makes them feel like they're not doing enough, or like they're putting a lot more pressure on themselves. Yeah, or just bullying mm -hmm. as oh, yeah. well. Yeah, sure. bullying. Like the world, yeah. It could be very toxic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that like us even talking about mental health and it, how important it is to acknowledge, be aware of how you're feeling, that helps even though like if your parents are like not mm -hmm. there being supportive. For at sure. least media that it's becoming more and more. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, Speaking for like at least the East Asian or at least Asian American community, uh, sometimes you'll see parents, when, when you find out that your kids um, are saying seeking help or, or seeking therapy and then you know people start to say things and then a lot of times parents feel like people are going to judge us you know think oh they, they don't they're, first of all a lot of these people outsiders aren't very educated on it so they think like the, the parent did something wrong or the parents didn't teach their kids like this is something that is taught you know and so there's a lot of Shame. spread of misinformation yeah. and then on top of that there's a thing where in like Ch Chinese speaking uh, communities, there's a thing where like we feel pity. Mm. There's, a, there's a direct translation of the word pity, kalian. And we feel pity for, oh like for instance, if you're eating out and then you see someone has their kid, like you know that it's probably neuroatypical or you're quick to say, oh, like we should have pity on them. Mm -hmm. This is, creates an other category for these people. Yeah, and that's very, so yeah, it's very prominent in the Asian community. It's also why the stigma is so, Mm -hmm. prominent uh, within our community and why it's extra important that we talk about it this month you mm -hmm. know N not only that but i feel like perfectionism is very much mm -hmm. in, in like a huge imposed thing. on, yeah. Yeah, on yeah. kids mm -hmm. and that drives them to a certain point of anxiety or depression mm -hmm. um, or pan you know, panic disorders the gamut from a parent level not um, dismissing something and just saying that they need to work harder or something mm -hmm. could really yeah be very unhelpful so it's like part of while we're talking about it, it's like even if you're not dealing with mental health being aware of it mm -hmm. you'll likely be a parent one day yeah and you need to be like acknowledge that this is something that could be happening to your kid or your, or friends your friends or yeah. your spouse and being a support system is very important exactly just don't think you know all the answers be empathetic to whatever your friends are going through like they don't have to be diagnosed to have their mental health be valid like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. yeah if you're struggling in any way with your mental health, go see a professional, go see a therapist. A lot of colleges have free um, free services like this. Don't be afraid. I know people are afraid of like, if the therapist is the right match or not, but the first important step is to just make an appointment. You like It could help you. Don't let yourself persuade you of not doing it. And if you just wanna learn more about Mental health, I think that's really important as well. Uh, we'll put like some resources down below that could help um, inform you more about um, maybe something that you didn't know about that you have, you know, mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. We'll still work on our mental health. Hopefully yeah. we do as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thank you, Rondi, yeah, for, for being our plus one today. <laughs> this is not, we don't need just a month to talk about mental yes. health, but all year round, mm -hmm. okay? And we'll see you next time on Lunch Break. Bye. Yay, bye.